Hey everybody, Rose Matter here, and welcome to part four of my Master Detective Archives Rain Code Let's Play. Last episode, we ventured into the mystery labyrinth and kind of got an idea of how it works. And uh, after a long time going through it, uh, kind of breaking down the whole crime bit by bit, it seems like we are approaching kind of the end game, the, the big boss as it were, and we're going to finally figure out how all of this went down, although I think we have a decent idea of, of like how it went down and who the culprit is. Uh, so we're going to continue on. Let's get back into it and let's see the conclusion to the first case. What is this? Looks like a fort to me. With this kind of protection, I bet the truth is in there for sure. You just have to destroy it. So the truth is here. You can't have the truth. It's impossible to destroy this fortress. Just give up and leave. Whenever a culprit takes a last stand like this, you know we're just a step away from unriddling this labyrinth. Master, time to show him how dangerous you really are. After all, he did try to set you up. I'm not worried about that right now. We're so close to the truth. We gotta do this. <laughs> it's boom kill time! What? <laughs> God, Shinigami. All right. Oh, gosh. Okay. Shinigami's tutorial corner. To overcome the last stand of the Phantom, tear through all obstacles with the mega sized God, Great Onset Destroyer, me. Okay. Let's do this, Master. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, okay. Oh, Blast wow. away the gigantic iron balls released from the Phantom's Fortress with a corresponding kick. Oh no, I have okay, so A. A, that's easy enough. No one can stop me. When an obstacle closes in and the screen slows down, press the button to attack. What? Missing the input timing means failure and taking damage, so be careful. Okay. I won't let you have the truth. Nope, I okay. Fuck that up. I see, I see. Destroy huge walls with the corresponding tackle, so that's why. When the screen slows down, press the button to attack. Go away. Keep up and scram. I think the first time I I, I was see. late. Jump to avoid the thorns. Okay, B. Your deduction is wrong. Go away. Don't come near me. Don't come any closer. Stop it. Switching the first and fifth cards is just your imagination. It's a completely faceless lie. There's no evidence they ever swapped. Destroy the wall with the solution key. No, check, check. There are obstacles that even God made can't destroy with a solution key, or without a solution key. Open up the solution key window, pick a key that contra bleh, contradicts the Phantom's statement, and boom slash it with Master Solutions Blade. Use the solution key to smash through the wall, Master! Right, I'm going with that goddamn distorted plate that I keep wanting to use, so let's go with that one. No, there are traces of a swap. The warped plate from car five. 
The reason that plate was burned so thoroughly is because originally it said Car 1. Left as it was, it would have messed up your plot to make Car 1 look like Car 5. That's why you made extra sure it was burned beyond recognition. up your deduction you have no hard evidence proving that location was the first car oh shoot do i mean we do Looks like we need another solution key to boom kill him Good oh the blood master. stains yes there is proof the blood stain on the inner lock of the infirmary in car five the culprit probably didn't notice it but I remember. It's my blood. <clears throat> what? When I was trying to get into the infirmary in car one, I cut my finger on the glass. When I reached through to unlock the latch, I must have gotten blood on it. But that blood stain would have been hidden while I didn't even make that connection. Open. That was his blood. Oh my goodness. That's probably why the culprit missed it. My blood, which was left behind in car one, was found in car five. This proves that someone pulled off the car switching trick. This Come on, that's it. That's it. Case. Huh? All right, now I'm inter interested to see like how this affects the real world. My gosh, we're still going. They made it seem like this is the end. The culprit must but be nope. hiding somewhere in the fifth car. Probably someplace safe. Okay, I'm gonna oh boy. I'm gonna say main control room A if he's able to get there. Here. Because we weren't able to get into it, right? The culprit was hiding inside the main control room, which was locked shut the entire time. I didn't have the key, so I could never have gotten inside. I bet the culprit moved there from the infirmary while car one was running on the second track. If the trains management company, Amaterasu Corporation, was involved, the culprit may have had the key. And then they hid in a blind spot I couldn't see from the window. That's how they got past me. No, it's not me. I'm not the culprit. Great detective work. I'd call that a critical hit. He seems like he's barely standing. All that's left is to finish him off. <laughs> Again? I thought we already did. Finish him off? Uh, how do I do that? Shove all your evidence into the solution blade and slash as hard as you can.
Oh, this is like the end of Dinkin' Robo with the comic. Maybe? The music is even kind of similar, too. Oh, it's so like the end of Dinkin' Robo. The deduction denouncement is where the truth is made clear by thinking through all the deductions up until that point. Place the correct piece in the corresponding deduction gap to reveal the truth. Locked pieces can be opened by solving mysteries, so keep it up, 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 up. Once every gap is filled with a piece, a finale re uh, revealing all mysteries will be unveiled. Everything has been leading to this moment. I love that they are doing their own thing with this series, but they do have those kind of nods to Danganronpa too, and this was always one of my favorite parts, was putting everything together. Oh, it's exactly the same. This is amazing. Okay, so where did Yuma rush to? Oh, the controls are a little finicky, though. Mm. was used to okay well we know that's the coffee I can just pick the coffee except it hasn't been opened yet yeah so I'll have to move on and unlock that oh no oh, I didn't mean to do that no I but <sighs> fire extinguisher yeah, these controls are not my favorite. The, pi the pictures are so small. And what was used as a red herring was the cushion. Where was the culprit hiding? So he was doing the train detachment in the main control room. And then blackouts. So the culprit burn is going to be the plate. Pick it. Back this way is the knockout drug. What body was found last? Apex. Who is the culprit? <laughs> I wonder what it could be. Please just let me. Pick Stilch. Oh. oh, that works too. I should use it that way instead. So use X. This is so much easier. Okay, good to know for next time. Alright, there we go. has master in their sights. Truth bombs are about to be dropped. Time for the deduction denouement. The incident unfolded aboard the Amaterasu Express, which was on its way to Kanai Ward. I rushed onto the train as it was about to depart. At that time, the train was made up of five cars. Oh, because you were fast asleep in the lost and found, master. 
ship snoozing, the case would never be solved. When the train started moving, it was only four cars long. The fifth and final one was left at the station. And so, the culprit's scheme had already begun. Meaning Amaterasu Corporation was involved from the get-go. On the train, the master detectives were gathered together in car two. That was the dining car. And the culprit had already mixed a knockout drug into every drink there. I bet the culprit was the first person on the train, so they could prepare in advance and wait for everybody else. I felt unwell, and Melamie went to the trouble of pouring me a coffee. But after drinking it, I started to feel drowsy. I'm bummed out because the I was in denial for so long. Then was like maybe, maybe they're okay. Because I liked some of the characters. I liked Melamy. I liked Poochie. I was hearing things at the time and thought that I might be seriously ill, but it was actually the drug. Uh, this thing you thought yours truly was responsible. Sticks and stones won't do much to a dead guy, but slander stings. culprit sent me off to car one in order to frame me as the killer. I'm sure the culprit didn't expect you to get sick, Master, but since you look like a super easy target, they probably changed their plan and went after you instead. Once I left, the other master detectives must have fallen asleep because of the drugged drinks. Here's the thing too is, was Zulch expecting me on the train at all? It didn't seem like, it seemed like I kind of like might potentially mess up the situation, but he's just like, all right, well, I can use this. Instead of like having all of the uh, detectives just be found dead, he left me alive. So he's just like, okay, well, we can pin it on this person. The culprit then burned everyone to death, setting all those master detectives on fire on purpose. What a psycho. This was when the culprit put their plan to frame me into motion. First, they carried Aphex's charred corpse to the infirmary in car one. The very first body we found. Then, they deliberately left a fire extinguisher near the restroom I was sleeping in. This was done to prompt me into smashing the door later. Gotta have someone get inside somehow, or else nobody would find the body. Next, the culprit entered the infirmary, locked the door, and laid down on the bed with Aphex's charred corpse. Jumping into bed that is pretty fucked up. That's got a smell. I thought chivalry was dead. What a gentleman. I'm actually a little jealous. A knife and cushion created the red herring. Hell of a way to pretend to be dead. Furthermore, culprit set the room on fire just as I was waking up. While you were sleeping, I felt someone come into the restroom. They must have seen me then and timed it. When I woke up in the restroom and went into the hallway, car one was beginning to fill with smoke. Oh, not some precise timing! I caught a glimpse of Zelch in the infirmary, with a knife lodged in his chest. But it didn't take long for the smoke to obscure everything. That was when the culprit took out Aphex's burnt corpse, switched places with it, and waited for me to enter the room while hiding beneath the bed. It's just like a magic trick, switching places under a veil of smoke. Meanwhile, I found the fire extinguisher on the floor, smashed the window, Unlocked the room and went inside. Just like the culprit planned. And that's why they left the fire extinguisher there in the first place. After the smoke cleared, I found Zilch's body burnt to a crisp. At least, that's what I thought. The charred corpse was actually Aphex. The culprit had me completely fooled. That must have been why they picked the time-consuming method of roasting someone to death. Plus, the body was about the right size. I bolted out of car one after seeing the corpse. 
The culprit was under the bed at that time, huh? They probably laughed at you from there, watching everything unfold like they planned. I went on to discover the charred corpses of the other master detectives. And around that time, the culprit came out from under the bed and went to the main control room in car one. Controlling the train from there, they detached car one. That caused the blackout and shaking, and the power source was switched over to the backup system. So when the train shook, was there or was there not jiggling in my glass? Take a guess. While the detached car one was running on a separate track, the culprit went to work, preparing to disguise car one as car five. What about the juggling? <laughs> First, Apex's corpse was carried to the corridor, and the necklace removed earlier was placed back on. Then, the car one number plate was burned, so that it couldn't be properly identified. Everything in place. The culprit went into the main control room, locked the door, and waited for the train cars to reconnect. And at this time, the culprit was riding in car one on the other track, right? Yeah, the train, which was only cars two, three, and four at the time, remained on course. Since we were in a tunnel, I didn't even realize car one was moving alongside us. The train we were on went through the tunnel with only three cars. When it came out of the tunnel, the car with the culprit in it attached to car four. Now behind car four, that car became car five. The swap was pre-programmed into the train's automatic operating system, right? Technology sure is convenient. The culprit riding in car one attached it to the back of car four. That caused more shaking, but there was no blackout this time because the power supply stayed the same. Additional shaking occurred inside my blouse, <laughs> but the power stayed on. After that, I mistook car one for car five and walked right in. The culprit wrecked it so much, I didn't even notice the door I had smashed when I was in car one before. I figured there'd been some kind of brawl. In retrospect, it it's so obvious. <laughs> Maybe not super obvious, but I do like this when you go over it and all these little things that I missed. But that was part of the culprit's plan, wasn't it? Also, no one would realize it was actually car one. Like the fact that the, you know, the infirmary. Now, I'm trying to think about it. Like with car five, did they say that it would have the same things? Did it say what was each car? Probably not, right? They just said like, Oh, maybe they did in the map. But the fact that, yeah, like, the bed was burned and the window was smashed. When I found the corpse, I deduced that it was Aphex from the necklace it had on. But I was just rediscovering the same charred corpse from car one. The disguised corpse and the car switch completely fooled me. Reusing a dead body? The train arrived in Kanai Ward. It connected to a different, prearranged Car 1. And with that, the train once again had five cars. So much attaching and detaching. What a stupid, crazy, elaborate trick! The peacekeepers were lying in wait at the station. As the sole survivor, I was set up as the one responsible for the murders. And Amaterasu was in on it! That really turns me on! You mean pisses me off, right? During that time, the culprit stayed hidden in the main control room of the disguised car one. And waited for the peacekeepers to haul you in, Master. They were right there at the scene. After burning all the Master detectives, the culprit faked their own death and tried to frame me as the killer. 
It was a cunning, cold-blooded scheme. And the evildoer who committed these countless contemptible crimes is none other than... Silch Alexander! It was you! I love the pointing. I feel like every detective <laughs> thing it needs people to point. Is that it? What's this? It's the truth. It's the soul of the true culprit who made this mystery labyrinth. The soul of the true culprit? Wait, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> now it's time for the oh my, to It keeps going. Here we go. It's my time to shine. I guess this would be like the equivalent of the execution. Like, we've done all of the stuff we needed to do. Surging bloodlust. Overflowing despair. The brilliant soul of Shinigami. Shall expunge this cursed case. Death to all deplorables. Huh? We're back? What are you talking about now? Your spirit shouldn't be broken. Yet. The peacekeepers will take care of you. We have all the time. He was like, I should have got me. Uh, what's gonna happen? Is huh? it gonna change? Huh? Shinigami! Where are you? <laughs> Nothing here's changed. What's going on? Shinigami? Are you listening? Get him! Oh gosh. Wait! I know who the culprit is! Yeah, they're like, yeah, so do we, but we set it all up, so. What? It's Zilch! He's still alive. He framed me. What are you talking about? He's already dead! Huh? But Shut up! This is not up for discussion! Eh, what a waste of time! Take him away! Shinigami! Where did you go? This isn't what's supposed to happen! <laughs> I'm right here! She's like, I just like to wait for the best opportunity to come in. You're so cute when you panic, so why head to enjoy the view for a bit? Stop playing around! Why hasn't the situation changed at all? He must be hallucinating. <sighs> Taking him down shouldn't be a problem. Take him away! What? He's dead! Wait, what? Looks like it's over. Huh? What's over? Like Zilch she actually died in What's the real world? On? There's always a price to pay. When I read the soul of the true culprit, the mystery labyrinth created by the culprit is destroyed. But as a price, the source that created the mystery labyrinth also perishes. But I feel like in certain up, like situations that that would just like take all of the answers with the person who committed the crime. The source perishes? 
Don't tell me. That's right. The true culprit dies. Then that report saying Zilch, the true culprit, was dead. And that solves today's mystery. The true culprit is as dead as a doornail. Except I'm still on the hook for the murder. You're now innocent and free to go, master. A happy ending. A roll credits! There's nothing happy about this. Zilch died because I solved the mystery, right? Huh? He was a dangerous murderer who killed four master detectives. He deserved to die. I mean, I don't think I'm completely free to go. Not even with Zilch being dead. Exactly, because they the their story was that Zilch was died or was dead anyway. In that case, say exactly what I'm about to tell you to that gilded idiot over there. Okay. So this is gonna cause a little bit of discourse, I think. It's gonna have Yuma maybe second guess whether he wants to solve the mysteries knowing that the culprit's going to die. Like not be taken into custody and charged but just die and he seems like a nice guy and he doesn't want to kill people okay swank did you just receive a report that zilch was dead how did you know that i thought so if he was alive until moments ago that changes things about this case someone who died in front of our my eyes was alive. This is clearly an attempt by the culprit to disguise the truth. Don't tell me the peacekeepers lied to try to cover up what really happened. You didn't try to frame an innocent person, did you? What? You think you can weasel your way out of this? You better not forget you're in Kanai Ward now. You're powerless before the might of the Amaterasu Corporation. No, um, I didn't mean... He was like, um, Shinigami, that didn't work. Hey, don't surrender so easily. You were so close. That does it. You're under arrest. Listen, you got no right to remain silent, and you got no right to call a lawyer either. Take him away. Well, that oh, didn't work out. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on just a second. Hey, excuse me. Do you have a minute? You. It's all He's good. gotta be a detective, right? Let's stop all the fighting. Yeah. We both have to follow orders from the higher up, so let's not do anything that causes unnecessary tension. Falsifying evidence and testimonies is a drag when it comes time to do the paperwork, right? It's tough keeping things consistent. Just forget about all that and leave it to me, yeah? You know, I saw that the true culprit was alive and well just a bit ago. What? If you let us go, I'll cook something up in my report to the World Detective Organization. It's fine, this you is what I said from the beginning too. I was like, I wonder if Yuma's gonna be rescued by a detective. You. Your punishment might be kind of brutal. So, you know what to do. Leave things well enough alone, as they say. Let's go. Goodness, that worked out. Now I'm just listening to him. I'm like, who, who have you voiced he? before? Beats me. Every time a new character shows up, I'm gonna be like, hmm, I probably heard you somewhere. So if it wasn't for this guy showing up, like even Shinigami didn't know that was gonna happen, like I would have just been taken into custody. Well, I bet that was quite a long trip for you. Welcome to Kanai Ward. Thanks. It must be Yuma. Yuma Coco Head, right? I forgot how silly his name is. I am. And you are? I'm Yako Furio.
I feel like I'm gonna like this guy. I like his design. I like his voice. He seems cool. I was born and raised in Kanai Ward. Just a humble member of the WDO. I'm the director of the Nocturnal Detective Agency. And the only detective agency in Kanai Ward. All right, now he's like, okay, time to meet the detectives that are not gonna die in the first, like, hour and a half of the game. My office welcomes you. Nice to make your acquaintance. Uh, thanks. The pleasure is all mine. Okay, I have to look up this guy's voice right now. It's driving me crazy. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. I can't believe... I was like, he sounds so familiar. It's Ichiban from Yakuza Like a Dragon. Only, like, one of my favorite video game protagonists in, like, the past ten years. Okay, I love him even more now. I get to hear Ichiban. This is amazing. Oh, I'm so happy. So he's a detective from the WDO. Finally, I've met an ally. He managed to turn away the peacekeepers, so he must be in high standing. I kind of regret looking up his voice actor because all I'm going to hear now is Ichiban, but it would have driven me crazy. Really? He's clearly just some careless middle-aged man. Oh, by the way, don't tell anyone about yours truly. You might have forgotten, but our secret is included in the contract. It'd be terrible if you broke this rule. To be exact, your whole body would be drained of its blood. Okay, I won't tell anyone. Well, even if you did, they'd just assume you're some crazy person. Now, shall we? Oh, by the way, I'd like to hear the details about this incident. Um, uh, right. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. It took a while to get through all the proceedings. They practically interrogated you, right? <laughs> Kanai Ward is completely shut off from the outside world. Communication devices such as cell phones are confiscated. Cameras are not permitted to leave Kanai Ward either. Even if you smuggle something with reception in, Kanai Ward is a dead zone. Thanks to all that tight closure, nobody's using this fancy station at all. Did you say no one? You show a lot of promise, considering how you handled that Amaterasu trouble. I was scared, to be honest. I don't want to deal with them if I don't have to. Uh, the thing is, the peacekeepers always antagonize detectives. As a basic rule, never look them in the eye. They're always itching for a fight, <laughs> kind of like mad dogs. <laughs> uh, right. Amaterasu Corp doesn't want the unified government or the WDO meddling in their matters. I even caught wind of them hiring a hitman. A uh, hitman? They plan to wipe out any master detectives before they enter Kanai Ward. The result of which is this Amaterasu Express Massacre. So Silge was actually a hitman? He should have just he should have just killed me. I don't know why he didn't. I guess he just thought, he's like, oh, he'll be an easy person to pin it on, and it's also going to cause discourse and people to not trust the Master Detectives. Nope. There was a real Master Detective named Zilch. He was murdered beforehand and used as a disguise. You were in the first car earlier. The real Zilch is laying dead somewhere in there. Oh, okay. There was a separate first car at the station before you arrived where Zilch's body was hidden. Then, the four train cars that you rode in would arrive at the station in Kanai Ward and connect with the fake first car. That makes a total of five dead master detectives at Kanai Ward's platform. With no master detectives left, you would be arrested as the only culprit. That was the plan. They would go to such lengths? Absolutely. Even though the plan didn't work, we still lost five master detectives. Given the situation, I'm honestly surprised you survived, Yuma. That's all thanks to me. You're so lucky to be haunted by yours truly. Wait, if there was a real Zilch, then the number of people on board the Amaterasu Express, including me, that makes six people. The numbers still don't add up. I, Hoochie, heard from the World Detective Organization that the number of master detectives on the train was precisely five. Oh, I'll explain that later. Anyway, let's leave this place. 
Wouldn't want to give the peacekeepers any ideas. I love knowing that they're being monitored, that he's just talking openly about this. I mean, it's probably a thing, it's like, the peacekeepers know that he knows, but they're just gonna leave him alone. It's raining. Hey, you're right! I have a feeling it's pretty much always gonna rain here, considering that on the main screen it's raining. They have to have that kind of let that neo noir look to it. Who's that just Naruto running guy? away? Beats me. Not bothered at all. Okay, great security. I see, I see. Right, once the culprit is boom killed, you'll get rewarded based on how well Master did. Well, just like Danganronpa. Are you gonna remember all of this? Oh yeah, that's right. I never upgraded my stats but i did say that i wanted to like see what areas i was a little bit iffy on or having trouble with and then kind of like move from there you'll get a reward for each overall rating between ss and c not only do you get a reward for the rating you receive but every rating below it so try shooting for the top Definitely have to work on my stamina. Okay, it's a interesting fit. It looks more like just a poncho and a ring hat, but <laughs> it's the best spot to learn about this town. Hey, relax. Don't be so nervous. This guy better not turn on me. He better not end up being a bad guy because I already love him just because of his voice actor. <laughs> Come on, this way. All right, before we talk to him, let's look around. I really do like this style with the kind of like the neon, the rain. What a huge city. Maybe it's because of the rain, but it's a little eerie. I just love that look of, like, a lit-up city in the rain. So nice. <sighs> I love the view of the city from here. Oh no, it's like we're always right at the brink of dawn. Although, thanks to them, the real dawn will never rise here. You mean Amaterasu Corporation? Kanai Ward is isolated and out of the UG's reach. Now, 
Amaterasu was the de facto master of the city. None who wish to live in peace dare defy them. As long as you know your place, life can be pretty good here. Open an umbrella, and the rain won't touch you. Wear a raincoat, and you can even take a girl cycling. You know what I mean, right? No. <laughs> Kinda. I guess it's just, it's like, don't make waves. Just... Like the status quo and all that stuff but we're not gonna do the status quo detective agency used this building but we were kicked out due to a contract dispute the owner claimed renting the building out to detectives made the place unpopular in kanai ward detectives aren't even allowed to have their own offices really i don't know what the wdo is thinking but i don't want this town to change it should stay the way it is. It deserves some peace and quiet. And that's why this time around, I don't want any trouble. It's not easy to negotiate with these people. Um, I heard that Kanai Ward has a lot of unsolved mysteries. It almost seems like this guy is not going to be the type to go after unsolved mysteries. He just wants to kind of like keep things peaceful he doesn't want to like ruffle fla uh feathers and maybe my guy is going to convince him like no we should solve these mysteries they deserve to be solved and uncovered screams are part of the daily noise around here they're kind of like church bells marking sunset didn't he say that like this place can be peaceful as long as like you keep your head down whenever someone's smiling in that building someone else in town is weeping i don't know what to make of this guy it's like he seems like he wants things to be better but he doesn't necessarily want to do things to go against the amaterasu foundation or corporation however we can't go punching the guy who's smiling we can only offer a handkerchief to those in tears before quietly slipping away and nothing more is needed anyway we're not superheroes or anything we're just detectives just detectives he says but he has the resigned smile of someone who's given up that look tells me exactly the kind of place kanai ward is in a way words couldn't begin to describe there you go maybe it's like that thing about like the young new detective comes in and he's just like fresh faced and he still has some hope and maybe he'll give some hope to him too this buzzhead dude comes off like an irresponsible geezer but there's an ominous aura around him. You only end up like that if you've seen death all the time. Also, like, everybody, like, you're calling him a geezer. He looks not that old. <laughs> Could it be because of this city? Maybe. Or maybe it's his old man stench. <laughs> huh? Something wrong? Is there something on my gorgeous face? Back in the day, I was rather popular with the ladies. <laughs> You may think that means I'm no longer so popular. And you'd be right. The rain, it never stops. Does it rain often here? Oh, this stuff? Fatalists would tell you that all rain must come to a stop. But for the past few years, the rain in our town hasn't stopped falling. Well, damn, I like the rain, but that is excessive. For years? Yeah, years. It started around, oh, three years ago? Maybe once we solve all the mysteries in Kanai Ward, then the rain will stop. And that's how we know it's like, it's on its way to a better future. Weird, huh? Thanks to that, we have no need for weather forecasts. A city where it's always raining. No wonder things are so dark and damp here. The rain sure has changed things around here. Both the city and the people, too. Supposedly, there's something in the rain that messes with our bodies and the environment. But it's all hearsay. I was gonna make a joke about, like, what if it's acid rain? No one knows why the rain never lets up. But it probably has something to do with Amaterasu. Kanai Ward. It's such a bizarre place. <laughs> bizarre, huh? 
Uh, you're not gonna make it here if you find this shocking. You'll be seeing a lot of strange things in this city, I'll tell you that much. But there's no need to overcomplicate things. Everything is just an illusion in the rain. Just think of it that way, and you'll be fine. Trust me, it's easier this way. Is it? Well, now that I've finished showing you the town, let's head to the agency. This place... There's a lot more to it than I thought. Hmm? What do you mean? Oh, it smells so good here! It's like there's a florist on every corner! Oh, probably the stench of death. Really? I don't see any florists. I didn't mean it literally. To me, nothing smells sweeter than the stench of death. The stench of death? There are gruesome mysteries all over this place! It smells so lovely. That sounds so ominous. Hey! The elevator's here! Right! Coming! Now then. Come on, let's go down. Yes. Right. No need to be so nervous. There's nothing dangerous here anyway. Well, I don't know about that after what Shinigami just said. Oh, uh, is there anything I should check out here? Mm -hmm. You're not coming? I totally get it. It's fun to say no at least once <laughs> like this. Doesn't seem like it. You know. Yeah, that seems like literally it. Okay. Just the game giving me the illusion of choice. Now then. Yes. This area is called Kamasaki District. It's the busiest and messiest place in all of Ganai Ward. In other words, it's a lively area. The neon looks magical blurred in the rain. If there really is an illusion in the rain, I think it'd be the streetlights. I don't have any memories of this scenery, but- oh, The illusion is just the people disappearing and reappearing. Torture. I'm from a city like this one. Not the best draw distance. Oh yeah, right. My guy still has his memories gone. Into a shape, it looked like this place. Can I explore a little bit? Can I go this way? Is this gonna be kind of like open world? Can I like run around the city? Oh no, it's kind of putting me on like the like tracks. Like I can only go one way. Maybe it'll open up though as I continue on with the game. Always raining here. It looks like they have a good drainage system. See, there's a drain leading to a pipe over there. That kind of thing creeps me out. Just imagine what would happen if I got sucked in there. Hey, there's a clown in the sewer staring at you. Uh, a clown? Yeah, she's so much more bearable as a cute girl than when she's in her ghost form. I explained briefly, but basically, Amaterasu Corp picks on detectives. My colleagues and hired assistants all quit. They said working here as a detective was simply impossible. So, you've been working as the only detective for the whole city ever since? It's not like I can change careers. I'm a WDO detective, after all. Clients trust me to do the job. Although, most of my requests involve infidelity or finding lost pets. What about unsolved mysteries? The peacekeepers I'm going ahead. <laughs> detectives I'm the lead detective now. Oh. Oh, interesting. Maybe I have to get behind him. But now, things could be different since you're all here. Oh wow, he's so passive aggressive. He's like, I refuse to move unless you let me go in front. Oh wow, there's. At first, I was. Oh, it's all like blocked off. I was like, oh, it's be cool. There's like a little like mini market down here. We get to hang out in the sewers. Cool. 
Yeah, I got a feeling things will be a bit stuffy moving forward. Oh, it doesn't look very glamorous. <laughs> It's so much grosser than I was expecting to to be, but it, it is a sewer. <laughs> like I said earlier, detectives aren't allowed to work in a proper office in Conai Ward. Oh, I thought we were gonna have like a cool detective office, but no, we're in the literal sewer. Must we travel this nauseating path? I'm too blue blooded for this. I'm guessing he's probably just completely blind to the smell at this point. The other master detectives are already oh, waiting at the Oh, there are other master detectives. Awesome. Or yeah. The last to join us. He just said he was like the only one. Master detectives. But everyone on the train died. Thanks to that hitman hired by Amaterasu. The WDO anticipated interference. They prepared multiple routes for entry into Kanai Ward. They covered their bases. Other master detectives arrive from routes besides the Amaterasu Express. Both official and unofficial members traveled through these various routes. I see. So it wasn't just the Amaterasu Express. Amaterasu Corporation caught on and tried to interfere on all the routes. Granted, they deny any involvement. Feels like we were kind of lambs to the swat uh, to the slaughter, going on their official train. Made it. That tragedy happened to others too, excluding you. There are four others who survived. Damn. Unfortunately, Did the detectives know what, like, made. that possibility could happen? But as a result, you could say master detectives of the highest caliber have been gathered here. Each of you did outsmart Amaterasu and made but it Mine was just all. pure dumb luck. The highest caliber? Hearing master get complimented really annoys me. Wh why I wonder what these surviving master detectives are like. So exciting, so mysterious. I do like what they did with that, where they introduced all the characters, and you think that you're gonna like hang out with them for the rest of the game, and then they just kill them off in the first chapter. But now, hopefully, these ones will stick around for longer. I'm excited for some new characters. Here we are. Um, where's the agency? We're just outside? It's right here. <laughs> All right. Remember this human. Oh. The most okay, the whole thing you said about illusions. Be seen by the eye. There we go, that's more like it. This is the agency? I thought my eyes were gonna pop out. Welcome to the Nocturnal Detective Agency. What, you expected something a bit tidier? I guess I wouldn't call this place clean myself. I mean, it's not in the literal sewer, so it's better than I was expecting. But isn't it awesome? Our own submarine! Is this really it? Our office is a sub? <laughs> You've been assigned to a sinking ship of a detective agency. Oh, this place is pretty cool.
Thanks for waiting, everyone. Our final new member has arrived at last. Watch it! Don't just come barging in here. S sorry. What are you talking about? This is my detective <laughs> agency, isn't it? Victory is mine. Pay up. Wait, hold on. That doesn't count. That was an accident thanks to the chief barging in here. Nonsense. You should have expected him to return from his errand. Moreover, you should have realized he was back when our submarine resurfaced. Yeah. <sighs> when you put it like that. With my logic, anything is possible. Um, what are they fighting about? Hey, what are you doing with those matches? No fire is allowed on my sub. And he's smoking a cigarette. It's just a little game. He strikes the matches one by one. He wins if he lights ten in a row. But if he fails even once, I win. And he failed. Thus, I get all the cash. Hang on, it was lit. The chief opened the door, which blew it out. I succeeded in lighting it, so the game continues. Uh, next is the seventh, right? His voice is interesting. I can't quite pinpoint it if I've heard it before. Hey, ref, how many matches was it? Uh, you can check by counting the number of chocolates on the table. Sure thing. Uh, one, two, three. Is she eating them? <laughs> hey, don't eat those. We're using them to count. <laughs> How many are we missing now? Two or three? Come on, princess. How many did you eat? Be honest. Uh, two or three. Uh, what comes after three? I never remember since I so rarely count that high. Please give me just a moment to recall it. Okay, so so far, the woman with the glasses seems to be the only competent one. It's all ruined. Um, why don't you count the number of matchsticks you've used instead? Oh, right! Uh, I'll just count the matchsticks in the ashtray. Why the hell are there so many? <laughs> Didn't you say no open flames are allowed in here? <laughs> it's harder to quit than you think. Aha! Uh -huh. I remember! The number four comes after three, so the answer is four! Huh? But there is still a chocolate missing. Hang on, there were more than four to begin with. Did you eat another one? <laughs> You're eating it right now! <laughs> <laughs> it is too delicious! So this is what commoners eat. Interesting. <sighs> it is simply heavenly. Anyway, time to pay up. Enough. I'm using my authority as chief to end this game. And no more gambling. Do you understand you're in con, I ward? Don't give the peacekeepers any reasons to drop in on us. Virtue, honesty, and staying the hell out of trouble. That's our motto here at Nocturnal Detective Agency, got it? Now then, I'd like to introduce you to our final team member. Yuma Coco Head. A round of applause, please. We haven't been introduced to the dude just, like, chilling in the fireplace. Nice to meet you all. I was hoping they'd be amazing detectives, but they all look kind of dead. <laughs> I wonder which one of them will die first. Him or me? Hey, knock it off! They managed to get past Amaterasu's attacks. I'm sure they're all amazing. Yuma, let me introduce everyone to you. First, the one sitting over there is Halara Nightmare, a great master detective. The first to arrive at Kanai Ward. What a name! The little match boy over there is Desuhiko Thunderbolt. Oh my god. It's like they just pull a first and last name out of a hat. I'll probably just call him, like, Desu. The beautiful lady next to him is Fubuki Clockford. She is the heiress to the famous Clockford family. 
pleasure to meet you. And the one inside the fireplace? What fireplace? But why there of all places? He says it's calming in there. Anyway, his name is Vivia Twilight. That sounds like somebody's OC. Nice to meet you. <laughs> they kind of all do, actually. Right. Now that we're all here, let's have a seat. No, I want to look around. Everyone on the train died besides you? That sucks. Had I been on the Amaterasu Express, I would have solved it before anything had gone down. Damn. Missed the chance to show off my superstar self. This short stack is so arrogant. I hate his guts. <laughs> Yuma, I'm sure you're tired from your long journey. Go ahead and find a spot to sit. Uh, sure. Oh, like I said, I think this place is quite cozy. I love... This looks very plush. Like, I want to lay down on this rug. Or, like, this carpet. Yuma, do you like chocolate? Y yeah a bit. Did you know that chocolate grows on cacao trees? The sight of all those trees with their shining silver fruit must be so splendid. I think the silver part is just the wrapper. <laughs> huh? Does it not grow on the tree like this? Ah, I see. I thought I was peeling back its silvery husk. Her voice sounds sort of familiar. I'm gonna have to look them all up later. <laughs> what a misunderstanding to make for an adventurer such as myself. Adventurer? Correct. I am an adventurer and a detective. It is nice to make your acquaintance. She says she's an adventurer. She seems very sheltered, not knowing much about the real world. Nice to meet you too. You purposely came over to talk to me? You're so kind, Yuma. Don't worry. They aren't avoiding me or anything. I prefer to be alone. A place like this gives me a sense of peace and quiet. <sighs> I want to oh. die someday. Well. I have <laughs> no idea what to say to him. We're just gonna mosey on over here. <laughs> so you're the survivor from the Amaterasu Express Massacre. You don't look like much. It's thanks to yours, truly. Otherwise, Master would have died right away. <laughs> all right, let's find out all of their powers. Now, all remaining agents sent to the Nocturnal Detective Agency are here. There are a lot less of you than what we originally planned. Well, regardless of how many people we would have gotten, we'd still be no match against the Peacekeeper's numbers. So... We'll keep laying low down here, and avoid provoking them, as we've been doing. Huh? You want to stay submerged in this filthy river? I didn't come here to rot like sewage! I want to make a grand entrance, solve all unsolved mysteries, and become a superstar detective! Oh, and once I'm rich and famous, I'll make you all my assistants. In Kanai Ward, solving cases won't make you famous. All information is controlled by the peacekeepers. They simply conceal anything that's inconvenient to them. If you want to be famous in this town, it's much easier if you're a villain. I see. Got it. Wait, don't actually do it. Don't instigate anything with those guys. Got it? <laughs> I'm just kidding around. Why is the WDO gathering master detectives in Kanai Ward? What do they want us to do? Honestly, I don't know what the WDO is thinking either. 
I just found out about this recently myself. You didn't receive any instructions? Not yet, at least. I'm hoping they'll call us eventually. But before that, there's something I need to verify first. Yuma, it's about you. Huh? Me? I heard the peacekeepers talking and learned about it back then, but... Do you really have amnesia? Huh? <laughs> amnesia? Yeah, seems like I do. I don't remember anything from before getting on the Amaterasu Express. Ah, then you and I are alike. We are amnesia buddies, Yuma. <laughs> She's like, you ain't special. Huh? Fubuki, you too? Indeed. I cannot remember what I had oh. for breakfast. <laughs> I cannot even recall how I got here. So, wait. What is up with this girl? She can't cast... She can't count... I'm having trouble myself. Also, if you guys are noticing that I'm kind of like tripping over my words a little bit, it's because for some reason, my mic has an echo. So when I talk, it's like there's a pause, and then I hear my voice. So if you hear me pausing or having trouble speaking sometimes, that's why. But anyway, so she can't count i can't say that can't count past four she can't remember what she had for breakfast or how she got there ultimate space case uh i think you're just forget i think that's like next level though don't make things even more complicated my apologies how is she gonna solve anything if she can't she's the, she's got like the short attention span or the memory span of like a goldfish. How is she going to be helpful? She better have a really good ability. What is the source of your amnesia? Is Amaterasu Corporation responsible? No, uh, it doesn't seem likely. I was still at the station when I woke up. So you really don't remember anything? Oh, I'm surprised you got past Amaterasu's attacks like that. I probably can't tell him it's thanks to the pact I made with a death god. You better not. Talking about me breaks the contract. I think I was just lucky. Chief saved me in the end. Well, you can work off your debt to me. So you really don't know who you are? In other words, you don't remember if you're a detective? That's correct. Oh, but I do have a letter from the WDO. And this outfit is definitely mine because it fits perfectly. I don't doubt you. That's not what I'm worried about. I've already verified your identity. Huh? You know who I am? I didn't just daydream in the park and feed pigeons while y'all were heading here. I checked the routes everyone used and provided support wherever I could. Unfortunately, most of the info was kept secret, so supporting you was all I could do. At the very least, I did manage to obtain info about the Amaterasu Express. Then again, it was mostly thanks to Halara and Desuhiko since they arrived so early. I got the passenger list from Amaterasu Corporation using my special forte. That ability is top secret, so uh, I'm not gonna tell you about it just yet. Your name was on the passenger list, Yuma. Once we knew your name, obtaining more information was easy. I researched the histories of everyone on the list. This doesn't sound like something you need to hear. What? Of course it is! I might finally get to learn about my past! Uh. So... Who am I? The truth might surprise you, but... Among the master detectives registered at the WDO, no individual with the name Yuma Cocohead exists. Yeah, it sounds like a made-up name. Then again, all of their names sound like made-up names. What do you mean? Five master detectives were summoned to the Amaterasu Express. That is an undisputable fact. But a detective in training was also summoned. Detective in training? That's you, Yuma. Looks like you've been working toward being a detective at the WDO. You may be part of the organization, but you haven't earned your stripes just yet. So, I'm not really a master detective yet? Excuse me, Master. Despite that, I know for sure you'll be an integral part of our team. I reviewed your profile in the WDO records, and it turns out you have a phenomenal ability. An ability? So I do have some sort of special power too? 
So from what we saw, like, independent of the Death God thing, is he was able to see other people's fortes. And I wonder if that's it. And that's, like, even if they keep their fortes a secret, as long as they use them, we'll be able to... And wasn't I able to, like... I wasn't able to replicate it, no. Because that would be OP if I could, like, take other people's fortes and use them as well. Your record claims that you're a great cook. Uh, would you mind making us breakfast from now on? Your lake is made. I don't know if I can. I don't have any memories about cooking. Never mind. Did my profile mention anything else? Like where I used to live or my personal history? It didn't have any details of the sort. You see, you've got a trainee's profile, not a proper master detective's. I see. You know, trainees are kind of like appetizers at a restaurant, don't you think? I guess that makes you the appetizer <laughs> detective! <laughs> mm. Don't worry, I'll do my best to train you from the ground up to be a great detective. What's wrong? There's nothing to feel ashamed about. Everyone starts off as a trainee. Also, not everyone can use their forte from the get-go, though some are born rather gifted. Still, no matter how much talent you have, you require the right training to make the most use of your abilities. No matter how smart they are or how dexterous their fingers, no surgeon dives straight into surgery. The same goes for master detectives. If you want to do things the right way, you have to learn it. So, everyone here also trains at the World Detective Organization? The WDO requires a two-year training period for all agents. No exceptions. During that time, the agent's paranormal disposition is honed into a forensic forte, specializing in investigation. And those who manage to develop their forte are certified as master detectives. Like me! Plus, once you become a master detective, you get a detective deed from the WDO. By the way, not all detectives working for the WDO are master detectives. There are regular detectives, like myself, who don't have fortes. Oh, really? I still got my detective deed. It doesn't say master detective on it, but it still holds the same weight. A forte mostly depends on innate talent. Some people will never develop it, no matter how much effort they put in. But that doesn't mean they can't be a detective. Anyone can get a detective deed as long as they complete their training. So, is that my case as well? I don't think I have any special abilities. Uh, there is no record about your forte. Of course not. You could be like me and have no special powers. I knew it. Who cares about that? You've got me, Master. Look, there's no need to be so down about having no forte of your own. That has nothing to do with whether you're a good detective or not. Even a kid or a delinquent can be a master detective if they're good at one thing. But detectives with no special abilities must pass basic testing with flying colors before they're certified. So, in fact, you could say those without special abilities <laughs> make better detectives. You're just tooting your own horn, old man. But being both a capable detective and a master detective would be even better. Such as myself. You're tooting your own horn, too! Anyway, whether you have an ability or not, the fact remains that you've been striving to be a detective. So, I wanted to be a detective. Also, keep in mind that despite being a trainee, you were given a directive. That's pretty impressive. I like him. He is such a hype man. You must be quite capable. I mean, master detectives were killed, but you managed to survive. I'm not sure if that's right. I am sure you shall eventually remember all that you have forgotten, Yuma. Although, I still do not remember what I ate this morning, let alone yesterday's weather. It was raining. It's always <laughs> raining. Oh, right. <laughs> Is she this dumb on purpose? I think she's putting on an act. Maybe she's a giant skank. Oh. It's boom kill time if you fall for her, master. Damn. I didn't do anything. By the way, my agency treats both trainees and detectives as the same thing. The 
all you master detectives, you better not drop your guard or the rookie here is gonna steal your thunder. Got it? <laughs> Go ahead and try. Too bad for you, rookie. I'm gonna take all the medals. I have no desire to compete. <laughs> you senior detectives sure are a handful. Vivia, anything you'd like to say to the newbie? <laughs> no, not really. A call? That's the direct line to the World Detective Organization. So, they're finally contacting us. All communication in Kanai Ward is shut out from the outside world. So that phone is rather special. And, obviously, it's kept secret from the Amaterasu folk. If they're contacting us, maybe they'll finally give us our orders. And yeah, nobody's rushing, rushing to answer it. Go ahead, rookie. Huh? You want me to answer? Master! They're they can wait. To get in touch. Yes, we need to answer. They can, they can wait. wait. This is the beginning of another adventure. I am so excited. You better get it before they hang up. <laughs> what if they did? Like game over. Hurry up and answer. They'll hang up. Um, hello, Nocturnal Detective Agency. Please state your business. Good work, all of you. I assume everyone is present. Mm. So few of you survived. Far less than I anticipated, but considering who survived, this should suffice. What the hell? Who's this grandpa? He acts like he's hot shit. What beats me? I've never seen him before. My contact is usually someone totally different. Okay, I'm gonna look it up really quick. I think I have an idea who Desu is, but I don't remember his name. But he's like a pretty prolific voice actor. And I'm gonna look up the others while I'm at it. Alright, so I was way off. So Desu, I thought that he was the guy who voiced um, Teru Teru. I think his name is like Todd Habernack or... I know he's like a big but no, it's not. Uh, but it's funny, he apparently did voice uh, Keiichi in the latest Higurashi show. And I'm kicking myself. Uh, the princess girl, what is her name? Fubuki? She is the same voice actress for Best Girl Persona Haru. So apparently, she likes to voice like kind of princessy characters. Um, and then the other ones, I didn't really recognize them from anything. Uh, Vivia. So it's funny, he voiced um, Akasaka in the latest Higurashi anime. And I recognize the name Alex Lee because. He was uh, all over the place when Persona 3 Reloaded was announced because he's the protagonist's voice. And who else am I missing here? Uh, Halara, I don't recognize her voice actress. So, all right. I feel better now, especially Fubuki. I'm like, she's so familiar. No, uh, that's impossible. This is a direct line to the WDO. Um, who are you? Would you mind telling us your name? A name. Unfortunately, I discarded my name long ago. Now, I simply go by number one. I'm sure... I just completely cut him off. Oops. Joking? Seriously? Uh, my sincerest apologies for my rude behavior. I didn't expect number one himself to appear. This must be very serious business then. Is he a big deal or something? Number one is the top master detective. Leader of the World Detective Organization. The top detective? Detective of the WDO? He rarely ever shows himself. Thus, no one knows his true identity. 
He is only known among detectives as number one. He's the top of the World Detective Organization? It's just some old man. <laughs> Everybody's old to Shinigami. I'm like, Shinigami, how old are you? I am here to give those of you who arrived your instructions. It's funny. Uh, just as I was like scrolling down to look at the uh, the voice actors, immediately I saw who did this guy, and I recognize him immediately. It's a uh, pro Z pro Z D or pro Z D from like Twitter and stuff. I'm like, oh shit, it's that guy. There is a dangerous. I like I said from Twitter, like YouTube, like internet personality, and now I can't unhear it. Which we refer to as Kanai Ward's ultimate secret. Kanai Ward's ultimate secret? However, Kanai Ward's ultimate secret isn't a problem affecting only this city. There is a chance it relates to the ongoing great global mystery. Hence why I chose to deliver your orders directly. Move swiftly to investigate Kanai Ward's ultimate secret. Doing so will assist us in solving the great global mystery. That is all. Huh? That's it? How about some clues? Why do you think you're there? If you're a detective, search for clues yourself. Providing any information beforehand will merely result in misconceptions. Uh, understood. Do you recall the World Detective Organization's creed? A detective must never overlook a mystery. Any and all truths must be exposed. A detective must always prioritize solving a case. Emotions must be discarded to reach a perfect solution through a perfect deduction. I heard that every single day during training. But it's not something you can easily put into practice. Is that true, Master? I don't remember at all. Mysteries are the greatest threat to humanity. The WDO will not allow mysteries to go unsolved. They shall be eradicated with sagacious wit and indomitable will. We must guide the lost souls of victims to paradise in the name of truth. Go forth, proud detectives. Eliminate all mysteries from this world. <sighs> hey, did you hear that? We got a direct order from number one. We play our cards right. We're guaranteed to get promoted. <laughs> I'm hyped. It isn't so simple. Just look at how much we sacrificed to get you here. Kanai Ward's ultimate secret must have something to do with Amaterasu Corporation. Which means we have to snoop on them. They're gonna wipe <laughs> us out! So, it's a full-on war, then. Hmm. The WDO is serious. War is awful! I myself am a pacifist! Well, it's something we have to do from here on! There you go again with your jokes. Fubuki, were you listening? Huh? I was. However, I was also lost in my own thoughts. Oh my gosh, I can't unhear horror now. You weren't listening then! So, Chief, any ideas about Kanai Ward's ultimate secret? This place has so many secrets that I have no idea where to start. But one thing that comes to mind is this unending rain, I think. He said that it has something to do with the great global mystery, too. I have no clue what that is. Well, for now, let's sneak into Amaterasu Corp and start gathering up info. Don't you dare do anything dangerous like that. It's not like they're leaving secrets in easy-to-reach spots. Well, then what are we supposed to do? You really want to know? The right thing to do is absolutely nothing. Jeez. How did it end up like this? Oh, come on. You need to snap out of it, Chief. I've got a bad feeling about all this. Who would have guessed number one would show up? Ah! All I wanted was to sink quietly into the river. Are things really that bad? Yeah. Lives are at stake here. Danger is a daily occurrence in all of Kanai Ward. I'm used to wagering my life like poker chips. It feels like my path. Maybe for you, but I'm not that way. Who said I wanted that? 
I got it. Let's pretend like we didn't hear a thing. No, I know that's impossible. <laughs> Given the sacrifices that were already made, the WDO can't back down now. Uh, I guess we have no choice. Chief Yako. Everything that goes down in this city is handled by the peacekeepers of Amaterasu Corporation. They simply fabricate or cover things up in whatever way's most convenient for them. In other words, the truth they're hiding may be connected to Kanai Ward's ultimate secret. Some of these cover-ups may be clues for unsolved mysteries, then. But there are tons of cases where they covered up the truth. Then what we need to do is clear. Uh-huh. Don't stare at me, dumbfounded rookie. We've got to crush each unsolved mystery one by one. With all of them? I suppose that's one way to solve whatever's going on. Oh, fine. All right, listen up. Truth be told, I wish this day had never come. But part of me knew that it was inevitable. Our goal now is to expose Kanai Ward's ultimate secret. We'll be up against Amaterasu Corporation. So please, be extremely careful. We don't know what these guys will do to interfere with us. That said, you all survived the deadly trip to get here, so I'm sure you're up to the challenge. We've been trapped in this rain for a long time now. But it's time to put an end to that. Please, help me save this city. You heard him, Master. I love it. Things are getting interesting. <laughs> Miss Durfall! <sighs> In the unending rain, through the winding neon cityscape, draped in my raincoat, I roam in search of my missing memories. What secrets lurk in this labyrinth of drainage pipes? We have yet to find the answer. That looked just like Chiaki. Of detectives facing the darkness that enshrouds the truth is about to begin. And zombies? What? Excuse me?
All right, so that is going to do it for the prologue of this game. We're finally in the main part of it. We have arrived at Kanai Ward. We have met the uh, second batch of the Master Detectives, uh, the ones that will hopefully stick around for a little bit longer. Um, and I'm interested to see more of their characters. Um, I don't have any strong feelings either way about most of them. I really like the... Uh, the main dude, uh, maybe mostly because of his voice actor, to be honest, but uh, I hope he's going to be a good character. And uh, yeah, so we'll uh, hopefully learn more about these other master detectives and like maybe get to explore the city in the next episode and, you know, find out what's going on in this uh, in this ward and, uh, you know, like figure out all of the mysteries going on. So I'm really excited for that and I hope you guys are too. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned next week for part five. Until then, bye. Special shoutouts to my top tier patrons Emily Hornsby, Lady of Eternity, Jared Fan, Revealing Storm, Asborn Kennedy, Icognito, Harry Gazif, Zorin Ether, Cardboard, and Shadow Dragon. <laughs>